Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Guns and Guitars. I'm very excited today because I've had to rearrange my workshop to accommodate a new tool that we are going to be building. Those of you that have been following my channel, you know that I'm trying to start my own custom guitar building business, and I kind of dabbled in CNC a little bit with the cheapest entry point into guitar building with a CNC. And that machine was great. I learned a lot, but it does have its limitations. And so I'm upgrading today. I am gonna build my dream CNC machine and of course, because it's my channel, we're gonna do it on a budget. So stick around if you wanna see what CNC machine I chose to go with, as well as tips and tricks for saving money along the way. I'm Dan, this is Guns of Guitars, let's get started. So my first consideration for building my dream CNC machine was how large of a CNC do I need? And my number one goal honestly was I wanted to get the largest CNC machine that I could fit in my shop. Now there's two kinds of CNC machines. There are large floor standing CNC machines and there are desktop CNC machines. Now the large floor standing CNC machines, they start at like six or $8,000. And while I'm sure they are worth every penny, that is a bit steep for my budget. So I went with a desktop machine. And so the reason why that's my first consideration is because in addition to buying the CNC machine, I also needed to buy a desktop. After browsing some forums and joining some Facebook groups for various CNC machines and asking how to build a desktop on a budget, I came up with basically two solutions. Either one, I could build the simplest desk I could out of just two by fours and MDF or I could shop for used furniture on Facebook Marketplace. And I found a really good deal on this desk and it is massive. You can see it's three feet wide by six feet long. And in addition to that, I've got a nice drawer right here where I could store, you know, router bits and measuring tools. I got additional drawers here, here, and a really deep drawer where I can keep extra routers and spindles and things like that. And then I've got a sweet little laptop pad that comes out where I can set my computer while I'm doing carves. Now, this desk only cost me $50. No way could I have built something this nice for that amount of money. Had I been a little bit more patient and held out a little bit longer, I might have been able to pick one up for free or cheaper, but for $50, my machine has already arrived and I am excited to build it. Even though this thing is so large, believe it or not, it's actually not large enough for my CNC machine. So I'm gonna have to put a top on this as well. But that's okay because this desk is made out of inch thick particle board and it's very stiff and very rigid, but for my waste board, I am gonna need a layer of MDF anyway. At least according to the manufacturer of my CNC machine, they recommend mounting it to a three quarter inch piece of MDF. So this new top for my desk does three things for me. One, it gives me the manufacturer recommended material for my waste board using MDF. Two, it gives me my manufacturer recommended workspace for my CNC machine that is 48 by 76 inches. And three, another dimension that you need to consider for your desk is the height. Why is that important? Well, with a machine this size, I plan to do a lot of slab flattening and some of the slabs that I bring in here might be bigger, believe it or not, than this work table's dimensions. So it's gonna be important that I have an outboard table that is the exact same size as my desk so that I can feed slabs through while they're being flattened. All right guys, now that I finally have my work surface to the proper dimensions, it's time to start setting up my new CNC machine. And that means I need to reveal to you what I decided to get. So the machine that I decided to go with, holy cow, that's heavy, is the CNC Labs Long Mill Mark II 48 by 30, proudly made in Canada. We'll try not to hold that against them. 48 by 30 is a huge workable surface, but I'm not entirely sure why CNC Labs calls it the 48 by 30 because the actual working area is quite a bit larger. It's actually 34 by 50 and a quarter. Just to give you some perspective for you other guitar builders out there, that's long enough for me to do two long scale neck through bases side by side. 
I seriously doubt in my guitar building endeavors that I will ever need a machine bigger than this. All right, so now that I've got everything pulled out of the boxes, which this thing was packaged amazing, by the way, they used every square inch of space. Uh, there was no way any of this stuff could rattle around or get banged up. It was all really well protected with foam and cardboard and even had uh, empty boxes filling up the void so that stuff couldn't rattle around. I was really impressed by that. But looking around at all of this, I honestly thought there was gonna be a lot more pieces than this. And so I think building this thing is going to be a lot less daunting than I originally expected. Uh, you know, I've built a couple of CNC lasers and a CNC router. And so as I look around at some of these pieces, I, I kind of recognize most of it. So it should go together fairly easily. CNC Labs says that you can expect to spend about four hours putting this thing together. And they have a plethora of resources from you know step-by-step -step video tutorials to full printable downloadable PDFs that just walk you through every step of the installation and setup process. So uh, I'm very excited to put this together, but before I do that, I almost forgot something super important and I was reminded as I was unboxing this thing uh, because I spilt coffee on my brand new wasteboard. And MDF, when it gets wet, it turns into a sponge and it can twist and do all kinds of crazy things. And so to prevent any future damage from future coffee spills, because it's inevitable, it's who I am, ask my wife, I'm gonna put a coat of sealer over my MDF board before I install this thing. That'll also help protect it from future changes in humidity and stuff like that. Because, you know, I went through the painstaking process of making sure this thing is perfectly flat and level, and I just don't want anything to happen to it. So I'm gonna put a coat of polyurethane thing on this and let it dry overnight and then first thing tomorrow I'm gonna start putting this thing together. So here are the reasons why I ultimately landed with the CNC Labs Longmail Mark II 48 by 30 as my main CNC workshop workhorse. And a lot of this stems from my previous experience with my first CNC machine, that Fox Alien CNC machine you saw me review not too long ago. I learned a whole lot about what I want and what I need from a CNC machine, and I learned an awful lot of what I don't need and don't want from a CNC machine. But my second main criteria right after the price to size ratio was the customer support and community support that surrounds the CNC machine. This is something that I found absolutely invaluable with that Fox Alien machine and was sort of a happy accident. I did not realize when I was getting that machine, the support that came along with it. And like I mentioned in that video, there were times where I felt like throwing that machine in the garbage. And if it wasn't for the community support and the customer service behind it, I probably would have given up on it. So I knew that that was an absolute deal breaker for me. I needed a machine that had outstanding customer service and support and an amazing community surrounding it. And so then doing what I wish I had done before I got my Fox Alien machine, I joined a bunch of Facebook groups for various machines that I was considering. I joined the Millwright group, the Onefinity group, the Shark group, and of course the CNC Labs Long Mill group. So I did a lot of poking around on those groups and asked a lot of questions like, why should I get a Millwright Mega V over a Long Mill? Or why should I get a Onefinity over a Millwright? What I learned from those groups on a grand bird's eye view is that in general, the vast majority of Long Mill owners are completely satisfied with their machines. And the few that have had issues have had the issues resolved by help from the community, which is what I was looking for. And honestly, I got a lot of private message from owners of the other CNC machines saying that if they had to do it over again, they would have gotten the long mill. So after considering price and size and community support, I was able to kind of move on to what I knew I did not want from a machine. And what I did not want from a machine was underpowered stepper motors and a belt drive system. This is something again that I learned with the Fox Alien machine. And I still really like my Masuda Pro, don't get me wrong. I'm definitely still going to be using it in the workshop, uh, but the biggest shortcoming of that machine, as I expressed in my review, is the underpowered stepper motors and the belt drive system. So it left me pretty much with two options. I'm sure there's more options out there, but in my budget price range, it pretty much led me to either a screw drive system or a rack and pinion system. And just kind of comparing and contrasting the two for guitar building specifically, it seemed like it didn't really matter all that much. But the long mill does have an Acme lead screw system. System, which I am happy with may not be quite as fast as a rack and pinion, but it does have the potential to be a lot more accurate. And uh, for guitar building, just like target shooting, I will trade speed for accuracy any day of the week. It doesn't matter how fast you are. If you can't hit your target, 
it's not worth doing. Now that's not to say that the Millwright Mega V rack and pinion system wouldn't be good enough for guitar building, because it absolutely is. I know lots of guitar builders that are using that specific CNC. It's actually one of the reasons why it was on my list for consideration. But it just didn't seem to me that the rack and pinion system was really worth the extra money at this point. So it's also worth mentioning that the other machines that I was looking at uh, from Millwright and Onefinity and them, they only have a 30 by 30 work area. And the reason why that's worth mentioning is because, you know, I've not only talked about the customer support base and the price, but for even less money, I'm actually getting a much larger machine. And the machine is still plenty stiff, plenty rigid, and plenty strong. And that's the last point that I'm gonna make here and the last reason why I chose the CNC Labs long mill mark ii is because of the engineering that they put into this machine i mean if you've watched any review videos of the long mill mark one or mark ii you've probably seen somebody get up on that x-axis and ride it as the cnc machine is working its way back and forth which is insane i'm not going to do that to mine not because i'm afraid of breaking it but because i'm afraid of breaking me <laughs> i don't think that i have good enough balance to stay on that thing while it's in motion but they've done some really really cool things engineering wise from what i understand it's far stronger in its load bearing far stiffer in its flex and combined with the acme lead screws far more accurate. In fact, during CNC Labs real world testing under a normal working load for the machine, they actually found deflection to be less than 0.1 millimeters. That's less than the thickness of a sheet of paper. So I know I sort of poked fun at CNC Labs there in the beginning for being based in Canada, but it's actually something that's really beneficial for those of us in the US. One of the reasons why their pricing is so competitive is because it's based on Canadian dollars. And right now the exchange rate highly favors US dollars over Canadian dollars. So that's one of the reasons why they're able to price their stuff so competitively, especially for us in the US. Now, lastly, one of the ways that I was able to save money on this build was you might notice that the router that I have installed on this thing is not the Makita trim router that's recommended. It's actually the Avid Power Makita clone. Now you can get one of these on Amazon. The price varies depending on, I don't know, the time of the month, I guess. And so I picked mine up for 68 bucks. That's roughly half the price of the Makita trim router. And what people say is that it is a clone that's just as good or better than the Makita. But I was able to pick up that router and a four year replacement plan on Amazon for 75 bucks, which is way less than the cost of the router. And I know that I'm good for four years at least. And once I got it all together, I went ahead and surfaced my wasteboard. You might notice that I actually ended up adding a small layer of particle board on top of the M DF. That's because I want to protect that MDF as long as possible. I'm not sure if particle board was a good substitute. Uh, we'll see, time will tell, but I don't think I've ever seen particle board look so glossy smooth in my life. This thing surfaced it extremely well, which makes me really excited. Now at this point, I'm still waiting on some parts to arrive to finish my dust collection system, but I went ahead and decided to start flattening a few slabs. That way they were ready to carve into guitar bodies as soon as my dust collection showed up. And again, this thing worked outstanding. It is so much stronger and so much faster than my Fox Alien machine. And so now you can see I have my dust collection set up on a swinging boom arm. That way it can reach every side of the table and I can also pop it off and just move it around to vacuum up extra dust as well. It's a very convenient little setup for my dust collector. I also went ahead and used it to carve out a couple of guitar bodies just to really test the speed and accuracy of it. I'll be honest, I think I'm probably running this thing super conservatively because of all the issues that I had with my Fox Alien machine. I'm definitely erring on the side of caution and I really don't wanna mess up these guitar bodies because they are already bought and paid for. But we'll just say that as of now, this machine can finish a guitar body about four times faster than that Fox Alien machine can. I honestly think that I could probably get it to go faster than that, but at this point I don't need to. I'm totally content with it. So I'm just gonna leave it as is. And so while I'm completely thrilled already with this CNC router, I'm honestly still kind of just in the honeymoon phase, so I don't think I could give it a full review. I've got about 20 hours on it so far. I do have a pretty good idea of what it's capable of, but to really give it a full review, I'm gonna need a lot more hours on this thing. So be sure you are subscribed because I will be doing a full review on the Long Mill Mark II 48 by 30. And of course, if you wanna learn more information about this machine, you can check the links down in the description, as well as leave a question down in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them for you. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, and I will see you in that next video.